Boys, we have been issued a challenge. Joseph Sullivan, the man who holds the all-time world record in the 220 sleeve class for the squat, more well known for being the poster child of squat bars that didn't live up to their potential, has challenged me. He said, I bet you can't make it through a bodybuilding upper body day. So he gave me this upper body bodybuilding day. Now, power lifters are built for one to three reps. Bodybuilding is, is very fine-tuned 12 to 20 reps. And he gave me this bodybuilding day. He says, I bet you can't do it. And let me tell you, boys. Boys, I bet you his little existence, we can do, not only do this bodybuilding day, but we're going to do it fantastically. We're going we're gonna to exceed all expectations. Now, a training day is not like a tender date. You actually have to do some preparation. You have to follow through. And then you have to do some recovery from your follow through, right? So we will be training later today, but we have to prepare for this bodybuilding upper body training day. So we are preparing with some food. We have three eggs with 28 grams of sharp cheddar cheese. It's gonna be a little dangerous meal because it's so sharp. And uh, we're also supplementing it with a protein shake and a bagel with honey. The bagel with the honey is the more fine-tuned preparation for this training day. The eggs and the, the cheddar and the protein, those are almost like jump-starting the recovery from it because if we mess up our nutrition with this challenge, we won't be able to perform as well as we can in the following days, the following training days of this week. Buddy is deciding to be very destructive. He has stolen someone's shoe. Buddy, leave it. No shoes for you. No shoes for you. I swear, this is the cleanest way to eat a bagel. Otherwise, the honey dribbles off the side of the bagel and gets all in the beard and... Lord have mercy. It is always a good idea after a meal to take a bit of a walk. We got Buddy here. He needs his steps in for the day. I need my steps in for the day. So we're prepping for this challenge and um, we just ate. And when you go for a walk after you eat, you increase your metabolism, you get the blood flow going, you digest a little quicker, more efficiently. So we got those calories in, we're prepping for this challenge. We need all the calories we can get and just a little bit of light cardio post meal walking. I mean, I'm breathing heavy because we're walking up a hill right now, but <clears throat> just trying to get ourselves in the best position we can possibly get in for expressing our strength and endurance later today. After this walk, we've got another pre-training meal. Then we take our pre-workout. We get um, our inter-training carbs going. Uh, we do the training day. And then the challenge doesn't stop there because We've also got to prep our recovery from the challenge so that we can operate at max efficiency after for the rest of the week. So it's not just stuff in the gym that's important. It's the things outside of the gym that make sure that your gym trips are as efficient and as <coughs> potentiating as possible. All right, meal two of the day, we got 200 grams of Fruity Pebbles with about 12 ounces of Fairlife fat-free milk along with some chai tea with Splenda. Now, this is like the, the crux of the preparation of today because what this does, we're, we're, we're going to be training in about 30 minutes, right? What this does is it spikes the insulin so that your body has that insulin response increases your metabolism and you're able to kind of utilize what you consume a little bit better in your body processes things better and you're able to Zelda excuse me young lady please get out 
and basically you're able to better tap into your um, reserves, your carb reserves, your fat reserves. Everything gets a little bit more fine-tuned and, and you get a little bit extra burst. And then we've got the caffeine from the uh, chai tea um, to get us uh, stimulated. But you, you want to be careful with how much caffeine you consume before the gym because caffeine is the vasoconstrictor and you don't want your veins to get too small so you can't get blood flow going to, to muscles because that's, that's just a recipe for a bad time. So stop taking regular pre-workout.
between an hour and 15 and an hour and 20 minutes and if you don't believe me I start my rice after my um, fruity pebbles meal and it says that it's only been cooked for an hour so definitely below I mean definitely below two hours but we, we win we won and we got a pretty nice pump but the challenge does not stop there because we don't want our participation in this challenge to negatively affect our training for the rest of the week. We've got a squat day tomorrow. We've got a pretty intense squat day scheduled for tomorrow. We don't want today to lead bleed into tomorrow fatigue wise. So we've got to eat food, but not but, but like we've, we've got to eat food. We've got to do our recovery stuff and make sure that we are well recovered in order to perform optimally for tomorrow but also i um i forgot to prep my food for the week so we're also going to be doing that today i was busy uh moving my father-in-law yesterday and i was also on a podcast yesterday so that was super fun and then afterwards i went to the store and then domino's because i got a cheat meal for the day so pretty good day yesterday but i'm gonna do some meal prep and follow along for the recovery process We've got six pounds of chicken seasoned with McCorm or Gromate, yeah, McCormick Gromates roasted herb and garlic seasoning, seasoned on both sides. Actually, the other side is seasoned with buttery garlic and herb from Kinder's, but I, I ran out, so we we made do with what we had left. Kinder's is better. And then we've got this big old pot, big old pot of uh, seven pounds of beef. 93.7 beef uh, spiced with uh, salt and pepper. Since I utilize my beef in so many different ways, I can't get a, I can't get like fancy with my um, with my seasoning because I could be using it with eggs, which I'll spice as I go. I could be using it with rice and guacamole, which I'll spice as I go. I'll use it with um, pasta sauce and pasta. And I'll spice that as I go. So salt and pepper, pretty basic. It's all you need. Everything else is just a little tweak. But the uh, the chicken, that's always with rice, sauerkraut, and honey mustard. So pretty much anything's good with that. We've got 245 grams of chicken, two scoops of sauerkraut, 400 grams of cow rose rice, and a Diet Coke. But it is also as essential as anything to watch One Piece while you're eating. It's part of the recovery process. Trust me, I'm bigger than you. Buddy, over there, is a gaslighter. He convinced me. I finished my food and he immediately sat on my lap and he said, we're taking a nap now. Buddy, leave it. And um, I obliged. Okay, he, he exists here now. But naps, always a good idea for recovery. There is never a bad time to take a nap when it comes to recovering from lifting, for lifting, anything lifting related. Nap time is always good. 
We now have to go to work today. And let me tell you a little something about work. So I'm on audiobook narrator, right? And um, a lot of meditation and a lot of those far eastern concepts of affecting your heartbeat and your centering your mind is an abuse of the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous nervous system which is almost like a video game controller um connected to your breathing and there's an elevation to it as well where if you read for 10 minutes out loud for a day you also get a bit more clarity and it centers your mind a little bit more too so i chose to be a audiobook narrator um I always wanted to be a, a voice actor as a child, and this seems like a step towards that goal, and finally making little Patrick happy. And um, so it does, it's twofold. It's fulfilling dreams, and it's also getting that, um, that, that meditative, because when you're talking, you're breathing in very quickly, and then you are expelling air very slowly, and a prolonged kind of ratio between breathing in and breathing out and you get all those words out and the, the way that a lot of meditative breathing med meditation uh that goes on is playing with that ratio so you breathe in your your body says oh we need to use this air you breathe in rapidly you do the um uh hyperventilation you're breathing in very rapidly breathing out very rapidly You've got that that tweaking going on in your brain going oh no something is causing this person to have to breathe very rapidly and your heart rate goes up your di your your eyes dilate and you go into kind of like a stress response a um fight or flight mode but if you look at just box breathing where you breathe in for four hold it for four breathe out for four and then hold that for four that slows your heart rate down so this is very good at kind of centering and like abusing that sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system uh, relationship that develops when you're reading. So I got I got some work to do, working on a project right now, and this is helping me with my recovery. And it, it, I'm basically feeding two birds with one scone because I'm increasing my recoverability. I'm also working. So kind of cheating there a little bit, but it is what it is. So starting to get dark out and uh, we finished off three chapters for the day which is a pretty good average and uh, my reading speed and uh, technical skill level associated with the audiobook reading is getting incrementally better almost you can almost see a uh, linear or you can you can see definite progression um, as I get better and as, as I get more skillful uh, mastering the craft and it's getting better but we're at about 8,000 steps, 78 something, uh, 7.8 thousand steps. And one of the most important things to consider when you want to recover from something intense is your step goal. Because well, you, want, you want to have ample amount of cardio recovery. You want blood flowing throughout your body throughout the day so that not only you can digest the food so that your metabolism stays peaked up going helping you metabolize whatever you eat and um, have the recovery process kick started so motion is lotion you want things to be flowing well so um because we still have a couple thousand steps left we're going to take buddy on a nice like evening walk you can you can kind of see it's i mean there's there's a window shade but it's, it's kind of it's still a little light but it's starting to get dark so hopefully we can finish it up by the time it gets dark Buddy, 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 little guy, look at me, buddy, there we go, we've got 220 grams of beef, 400 grams of rice, 70 grams of guacamole, and more one piece, because one piece is essential to recover. Buddy knows. He knows. There were two bagels.